The Philippines is an extensive archipelago of over 7,100 tropical islands, which harbor a diverse array of wildlife, idyllic beaches, and an almost endless list of unique landscapes. Often backed by typhoons and other natural disasters, the Filipino people captivate the visitor with their unwavering optimism and vibrant Christian culture. The Republic of the Philippines is located in Southeast Asia, with China and Taiwan to the north and Vietnam to the east. Despite being known for its beaches, much of the country is mountainous and prone to earthquakes and eruptions from around 20 active volcanoes. The fast-growing population of an estimated 100 million people mainly inhabits large cities like Manila and Davao. The Philippines also claim a large diaspora of over 12 million people who send regular and vast remittances to their loved ones back home. The Philippine economy ranks as one of the region's best performers. Services and manufacturing have gradually taken over from the once dominant agricultural sector. The rich Philippine biodiversity offers beaches, mountains, rainforests, islands and diving spots not to mention the country's significant historical and cultural heritage. Despite the positive economic growth, 26% of the population still lives below the poverty line. Unemployment remains high, and underdevelopment in rural areas has left most Filipinos behind. These negative facts are further exacerbated by natural disasters which pummel the archipelago every year. The pre-colonial societies of the Philippines had substantial trade and other contacts with India, China, Japan and other developing nations in Southeast Asia. By the 1300s, Islam took root on the islands of Sulu, Mindanao, and eventually spread northwards to Luzon. The Philippines were subsequently colonized by the Spanish, receiving their name from the then King Philip II. The archipelago was then ceded to the United States in 1898 and only achieved independence in 1946 after World War II when it became the Republic of the Philippines. The post-war years are unfortunately best known for the notorious regime of President Ferdinand Marcos and his wife Imelda. His 21-year rule was characterized by political repression, censorship, embezzlement of billions of public funds and human rights violations. Today, the Philippines have a stable democratic government, a constitutional republic with a president as head of state. Challenges still remain in certain regions, notably on the island of Mindanao, home to almost five million Filipino Muslims who seek regional autonomy. After a 40-year insurgency, the government signed a peace deal with the Muslim rebels, the Moro Islamic Liberation Front of Mindanao, in March 2014, thus ending the violence, which has cost an estimated 120,000 lives. The Philippines is the fifth largest Christian country in the world, with about 93% of the population calling Jesus their Lord. It is also the biggest Christian country in Asia. The Roman Catholic Church in the Philippines traces its roots to 1521, when the Portuguese navigator and explorer Ferdinand Magellan planted a cross on the central island of Cebu. 
Magellan met with Raja Humabon, ruler of the island, and after curing his ill grandson, was allowed by the Raja, as a token of gratitude, to baptize 800 of his subjects. Christianity spread through the arduous evangelization of the Spanish clergy, who blended many aspects of the Catholic faith with indigenous ritual practices. Today, this colonial legacy lives on whenever, through religious dramas, Filipino Catholics reenact the Passion of Christ during Holy Week. The Hispanic-influenced custom of holding fiestas to honor a saint or a particular shrine has become an integral part of Filipino culture. One of the most colorful remains, the Santo Niño de Cebu celebration, held at the end of January. Most Filipinos are very religious. Their belief in God lies at the foundation of many aspects of their lives. Every Sunday, churches are filled to capacity as the faithful gather for prayer. Shrines like the 400-year-old Black Nazarene in their Quayapo Church Minor Basilica of Manila see thousands of followers every day, giving thanks for all the blessings they have received while the annual procession draws millions of people, forcing the city to declare the day a holiday because of the extreme congestion. In 2021, we would recall 500 years when, you know, the missionaries, when the Spaniards came and they celebrated the first mass and we did the first baptism in Cebu. The faith of the people, it is a faith that even in the midst of calamities, uh, it's a joyful faith. We are a people who celebrate with songs, with smiles you know, in our face. We are still a community which gather for devotions, uh, novenas, rosaries, masses. And whether they are Filipinos at home or people who go abroad, you know, when there are Filipinos, then they know that they will go to church and sing you know, with, with a loud voice. The faith of Filipinos has been seriously tested in recent years as natural disasters like the Bohol earthquake and super typhoon Haiyan devastated parts of the archipelago. Thousands of lives were lost and countless homes destroyed. Super typhoon Haiyan displaced nearly 11 million people. Entire coastal cities like Guian and Tacloban were leveled to the ground by extreme winds and storm surges. Churches in which the faithful have worshipped for generations have been severely damaged, as well as seminaries, convents and clerical residences. Rebuilding is a colossal task, and help from outside is urgently needed. Here in the Philippines, we have the word bangon, meaning to say, rise, no, or rise up. And we thought we can rise again. You know? And this is a firm conviction in our hearts. Many of us are still roofless, many of us are still homeless, but certainly we are not hopeless. The presence of so many people, agencies from all over the world coming over, telling us, we heard, we see you know, what happened. We are with you in solidarity. And we say thank you with your help and with our efforts, we will rise again. <laughs> 